the concept of radical collaboration couldn't be more appropriate, which is why I think uh, they invited me to come out here to talk about uh, this project I've been involved with for the last couple years. So I'm going to walk you through some stuff. I'm going to, I've been encouraged to blaze through as quickly as I can the talk of the Outrider, because you guys might have seen it on uh, the TED site. If you haven't, go see it. It'll be a lot slower. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an update on where we're at with some stuff. We've had some drama going on, which is pretty exciting. And then uh, announce something about a collaboration that uh, TEDxDU has set up. So this is me. My job, I, uh, I'm a Hollywood kid. I'm out in Hollywood right now. I live in Venice Beach. I get to do amazingly fun things. I make movies. I make television shows. I make television commercials. I get to do this really sexy life, and I get to do these amazing things. I'm incredibly blessed. But the absolute coolest thing I ever worked on was this project called The iWriter, which I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, and it's the perfect melding of this concept of radical collaboration. And there's three things that I've distilled down for this talk that I think we'll, we'll touch upon throughout, which is that there's a vision, there's enrollment, and there's follow through. Those are kind of the three, in my opinion, the three magic ingredients of radical collaboration. Um, this is, the, uh, this is the talk that uh, I, I gave at uh, TED, I guess, in February or so. The response was, was beyond our wildest expectations. It was, it was overwhelming. Uh, so much so we couldn't handle the response. We weren't able to respond, and it's one of the reasons they were invited out here to talk a little bit about what the uh, organization, the Non Impossible Foundation, is up to now. Um, this is Tempt. Tempt is a, uh, an artist, he's a street artist. And Tempt is paralyzed, completely paralyzed. He only has the ability to move his eyes. He has Lou Gehrig's disease. And I was exposed to Tempt at a, uh, an art show, a fundraiser. And my company decided that we were going to sponsor his foundation and sponsor him. So we went and we sat down with his brother and father and said, we're about to give you some money. What are you going to use the money for? And his brother couldn't respond quick enough. He said, I just want to talk to my brother. I just want to communicate with my brother again. And I said, well, wait a second. You know, I've seen, seen the movies. I've seen the stuff. You know, Stephen Hawking, machines, people, paralyzed people being able to talk. He's like, no, 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 that doesn't work if you're low income or you don't have insurance. The way we communicate is we run our hand along a piece of paper. Has everyone seen the diving bell and the butterfly? That was, I think, in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was so long ago that it would be happening right now. So that's how they communicate with Tempt right now. And I said, well, that's ridiculous. So what we're going to do right now, today, I was so blown away, we're going to commit to making Tempt be able to communicate again and to be able to do his art again. I was all fired up. They were all fired up. We shook hands. I walked out the door and said, what in the heck did I get myself into? I have no idea about ocular recognition technology. I have no idea about ALS or paralysis or any of these things. But I realized this was something that just had to be done. There was no reason why someone in this day of age who was as talented as Tempt, was not able to communicate or express himself or do his art. And that's kind of the first thing of radical collaboration, is there has to start with a vision. And the vision was, this dude has to communicate. He has to be able to communicate with his family, and he has to be able to, he has to, be able to do his art again. So the first thing we did is we got him a machine. We went, we've kind of basically, uh, being the producer type, the insurance companies never saw us coming. We battered down those doors in about three months. He had it this expensive machine that allowed him to communicate again. So now he was talking to his family and brother. They were having long, uh, long conversations. It was an amazing thing. I spoke at a design conference uh, a couple months later, and I met these guys at the Graffiti Research Lab. And they developed this technology that allowed them with a laser pointer to project light and draw on the sides of buildings. You know, it was obviously not permanent. And then they could do, so they'd go around and they would do these exhibitions around the world. Um, so I went home and was told my wife, I'm like, you'd never believe these guys I met. It's amazing. They're able to do this thing with these lasers and they can draw. And she, was, she said, well, why don't we figure out a way to make that work for Tempt? Maybe there's a way to connect the lasers to his eyes. And that's the other part it's of radical collaboration. Marry someone way smarter than you and you're good to go. <laughs> you're way good to go. So we called the guys, the GRL guys, the next day and said, hey, this is, our, this is our vision, this is what we want to do, and you think you can help us out, and what do you think, what do you think? And that's the, that's the second part, which is enrollment. We had to talk to them, and we had to figure out like, what motivated them, and 
what motivated us and try to put the dots together and try to create, because there's no money involved here. This is, this is, completely, this is completely a philanthropic endeavor. And so they, they said, eventually said, yeah, let's do it. So we flew them all to our house about a year later, took all this organization from every corner of the globe. My wife and kids and I moved out of our house into the back kind of the garage guest house area. They took over the front house. Our friends thought it were crazy that we invited hackers and graffiti artists to our house and then moved out. <laughs> um, they, and then they spent the next two weeks basically drinking beer, eating spaghetti, and making pancakes, and staying up round the clock and creating uh, this device. We, we programmed, my kids got involved, <laughs> my dog got involved, <laughs> and we invented what is called the iWriter. And this is the iWriter. And the iWriter is a piece of technology that is made with $7 sunglasses from the Venice boardwalk, <laughs> where you punch the lenses out, some copper tubing, which I'll go back one, some copper tubing, some copper wire, some LEDs, a PS3 camera that we crack open. This is just the USB output for the, for the uh, PS3 camera. And uh, that tracks the pupil. So eyes are sympathetic. If I look left, my right eye looks left. If I look right, my right eye looks right. And that tracks the shape. So if everybody right now looks at the screen and draws the letter A and doesn't move your head, that's how you draw that. That would then take that input from your pupil and put it on the screen. So that's the iWriter. It, uh, we then went to, to Temp's hospital room, set up a projector in his room, or I'm sorry, a, a camera with a wireless signal down to the parking lot where we projected in against a wall. And after seven years of paralysis, and a year of programming, a year of kind of working and two weeks of programming, Temp drew again for the first time. Thank you. And this shot is amazing because he's looking past his life support system, right there, out at a wall beyond where all his family and friends are in the parking lot celebrating him doing art again. And I would pose the question, what is his life support system now? What's going on outside the hospital room or what's going on inside the hospital room? So, this is a quote that still sends chills down my spine. That was the first, this is what Tony sent us the next week. That was the first time I'd drawn anything for seven years. I feel like I'd been held underwater and someone finally reached down and pulled my head up so that I could take a breath. Mm. Things blew up for us. Uh, we got all kinds of coverage. The blogs loved us. Everybody was like, this is amazing, because it's free. It's $60. You, you, you can grab your, grab your dad's glasses, pop open the lenses, <laughs> go steal a PS camera from your brother's ca your computer, and psh, you're gone. You're good. Uh, Time Magazine honored us as one of the top 50 inventions of 2010. And then in the summer of, uh, of last year, I got a phone call from the curators from the LA Contemporary, uh, the MOCA in Los Angeles, saying that they wanted us to be part of their show. We were psyched, we took Tony, Temp was psyched, we we're all fired up, this is gonna be amazing, finally get to celebrate him as an artist amongst some of the best street and graffiti artists of the world. Then there was a twist. It happened about a month before the show happened. We got, we started to lose conversations and communication with the curators, and finally we got this email saying, ah, we had to change the size of the wall that you're gonna do your exhibition on. And we were like, all right, well, dude, it's not like he's got two hands. This is a long period of time for us to do some things. You need to, we need to kind of have these things nailed down. And then before he said they're not, he, the attempt wasn't significant enough of, of an artist to have in the show. I'm like, I'm not sure where you missed the boat, but he's a paralyzed graffiti artist doing art with his eyes. I don't think that gets much more significant <laughs> than that. <laughs> and half of the artists that were in the show who had full use of their limbs totally give him huge respect for being a huge influencer. And then the kicker was two nights before we actually went on and installed our piece, we were having an email sent by the curator saying that the piece was too artsy. Art gallery, art too artsy. Um, so we were devastated. We were really bummed. 
But then it kind of hit us, wait a second, we just invented a way for a paralyzed guy to draw with his eyes. Are we really going to let this guy stop us? Are we really going to let this slow us down? Well, it reminds me of a story that he told me about a Chinese, Chinese, uh, Chinese Buddhist monks that would come down from the mountain and, uh, and get drunk on wine and paint all over inside the, the, the establishment. Just tag it all up, but with, with these brushes, you know, and almost in a fervor, in a, in, you know, and I, and I, yeah, I kind of see that in him, you know, and see that in us, and so I definitely see that, that, that energy. to do it, it was, it was so much that he, we all kind of felt it from him, you know, and we all wanted to make sure our letters were tight. We all wanted to make sure that he could say, hey, that looks cool, you know, everyone's tempted to say, hey, those letters are cool, because he's really looking at it. And if he, it ain't cool, he'll tell you, hey, uh, that's kind of wag, like, or you know, maybe you want to do this, you know, and that kind of ethic is, is unique only to graph throughout the world, is that we're, I, I, I think we're the only ones that are, are inclusive. We don't mind if you want to learn how to pay you roll with us. It's not so individualistic. So they tried to put us into from a 15 foot space to a 10 foot space to this little tiny space. We said no thank you. We'll take a 100 foot wall. Thank you very much. We took over a wall that uh, that gentleman who was talking there donated to us. They tried to say that he wasn't significant. Yet we got that people that you saw the time lapse of all those people contributing were some of the most significant artists in the street scene in Los Angeles who basically rallied behind Tempt and this ridiculousness of not letting him actually have his, his work up in the show and said, all right, we're going to show you who's significant and we're going to come together. And we're not talking about a bunch of, you know, Parisians with berets smoking cigarettes. We're talking about street artists. We're talking about people who don't commingle. We're talking about people who don't hang out. And they came together and put everything aside to get behind him. The collaboration that was going on in that, in that, at that mural and around this was, was beyond anything that you could imagine. And they tried to keep Temp from showing his art. Tomorrow, this piece, the piece that was originally designed to go in the MoCA, goes up in a new gallery space in Los Angeles. And this piece, this was a piece that he created with his eyes, and then we then had modeled in 3D and then formed, and then behind there is a mural from some of his friends who contributed so that there was a backdrop. So, so why is this significant? As I said, if we didn't have, as, as, as far as the, uh, the conversation around collaboration goes, if we didn't have that enrollment, if we didn't have people who believed in what we were doing, Temp's art never would have been seen. This would have never been made. His art would have never gone up on the mural. That piece of art never would have been made. And this is what inspired us to do the Non-Impossible Foundation. And the Non-Impossible Foundation is based on the simple premise that ordinary people, like yours truly, who have no experience in doing any of the things that you just saw, can create extraordinary, thing, ex create extraordinary things for the world, like everybody else in this room can. The iWriter Project is project number one for us. We're continuing to push forward. We're continuing to develop the iWriter. Um, I am incredibly happy to say today that thanks to, as I said uh, earlier, thanks to TEDxDU, the DU and Craig Hospital have both uh, come forth as people who are going to collaborate with us and to continue to push the iWriter project forward. So let's give it up for them. <laughs> but we still need a lot of help. And this was something that uh, I was told to actually say to you guys. This is an invitation to collaborate with us. This was an invitation. We need help with technology. We need help with operations. Operations, by the way, in our organization is me and an intern. So we need lots of help for operations. 
and we need help with finance. That could be as simple as just going onto the site and donating. It could be as complex as having skill sets with computer programming, with project management, with operations, with legal, with anything, with promotion, with outreach. Uh, anything you wanted to give, we're, we're here to receive that collaboration. Um, the goal in speaking with you guys today was to share the story of Temp, share the story of the iWriter, and to share kind of the three key components of what radical collaboration has meant to us, which is vision, enrollment, and follow through. This is the follow through. This is the invitation for you guys to help us out and help us out for our cause. If you saw the TED talk I gave uh, a while back, I finished with this quote, which is a call to action for everybody here to take a stand for some cause that they believe in. It could be starting a restaurant, it could be starting a band, it could be trying to, to save the world. It could be whatever you want. But if not now, then when? And if not me, then who? And I think there's a slight tweak we need to do for today, for this presentation, which is if not now, then when? And if not us, then who? Thank you guys very much. <laughs>